Good morning. Good morning. Welcome you as we gather this day to celebrate the Epiphany of our Lord. Epiphany is often remembered as that time when the Magi came to visit the baby Jesus. Also, uh, it's kind of an emphasis to show that God wanted all people. He didn't, Jesus didn't come just for the Jews. He also came for the Gentiles to be part of his kingdom. And it is sometimes also celebrated as the Festival of Lights. So we lit our candles this morning in celebration of that. We acknowledge the family of Gladys and uh, continue to offer you our comfort and God's blessings of knowing he's with you and he loves you. We'll continue with our opening hymn, The First Noel.
invite those who are able to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come before God and confess. We often forget that life in Christ is a life of celebration. O oh God, our oh Father, you have set forth the way of life for us in your beloved Son. We confess our slowness to learn of you, our failure to follow you, our reluctance to bear the cross. Forgive us the poverty of our worship, our hesitating witness for Jesus, our evasion of responsibility in your service. Our imperfect stewardship of your gifts. Forgive us that your love does not always come to others through us, that we have been thoughtless in our judgments, hasty in condemnation, grudging in forgiveness, slow to seek reconciliation. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Renew us through your grace by the power. Based upon your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's celebrate this good news with one another. Through Christ, God has given us his peace. By God's Spirit, we now share this peace with one another. Continue with the Kyrie for Epiphany. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. By the holy mystery of the Word made flesh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. By the humble nativity of the King of Life in the manger of Bethlehem, and by the splendid manifestation of the King of Glory to the shepherds and the magi, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace that his birth brings, for our salvation, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, O incarnate word. Amen. Let us continue our celebration <coughs> and join to sing.
for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes, and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the ark. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of medium and equal. And all from Sheba will come bearing gold and incense and proclaiming the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. Chapter 3. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which has not been made known to men in other generations, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am not less than the least of all God's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of respect for our Lord, I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to the Evangelist Matthew, chapter 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. And Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. 
they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join to make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father. king of 
of the Jews. There's, he sends the Magi to try and do his dirty work for him. And later on, he orders the murder of all males two years old and younger in Bethlehem. While unknown to him, the Holy Family escapes to Egypt. In the scripture's way of speaking, a mystery isn't so much a problem to be solved, but a hidden word and promise being now revealed by God. So when Paul speaks of a mystery, he's speaking of a revelation, not of information, but of the appearance of a person. It's not a case to be closed, but more like a gift to be opened, revealed, and received. The good news that was hidden in the prophets has now been revealed in Jesus. As Paul declares, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of a promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. According to Paul, in our Lord's epiphany, Jesus is the Savior who is revealed for all people. Jesus is the Savior revealed to you and for you. That's what the word epiphany means, to reveal, appear, make known. The star revealed the birth of a king to the Magi. The prophet Micah revealed to Herod and the Magi that the Messiah, the Christ, was to be born, not in Jerusalem, but in Bethlehem. The Magi's gift and worship revealed their faith in Jesus. Gold confesses Jesus to be a king. Incense confesses him to be a special high priest. And myrrh confesses his death. For he came to be a sacrifice for you. And God's dream, which he gave to warn the Magi, reveals Herod's true wickedness. For just like the Magi, we're blind without the word of God. As Isaiah reveals for us, the darkness of sin covers the earth. Thick darkness of death, doubt, despair, and wickedness shroud our hearts. Apart from God's word, not only are we blind in sin, but also blind to the extent that sin has in our lives. There's a treacherous, wicked King Herod within our own sinful hearts. So, if we want to join the Magi in finding the King, we must close our eyes to all that glitters here in this world and find in this humble child our true and only treasure. We need to put away all selfish desires and look to the concerns of others and count our neighbors as more important than ourselves. Then we're able to rejoice with the Magi in the revelation of the Epiphany mystery and find in this holy child the one who finds you and rescues you. In our Lord's Epiphany, Jesus the Savior is revealed for all people. Jesus is a Savior revealed to you and for you. Additionally, like any good mystery story, our salvation happens in the most unexpected of ways, with a most un unexpected Savior. God becomes human and is born to be a king, but there's a twist. Not only is Jesus the king of the Jews, he's also the king of Gentiles. Well, Jesus is born to lowly, unknown, humble people, Mary and Joseph. The mighty God and Lord of all is born of a virgin and laid in a humble manger for all. 
Jesus' birth reveals the kind of Savior that he is. He is born for the outsider, the foreigner, the outcast, the lowly, losers, and sinners. Jesus is born for you and for me. To show the depth of his mercy, Jesus takes on all our misery. To reveal his grace, Jesus bears all our guilt. To make known his salvation, Jesus places upon himself our sin. To reveal the depth of his love for us, Jesus dies in our place. He doesn't die just for little sins and little sinners, but he dies for the chief of sinners. For the likes of Paul, you, and me. We who are not God's people now are his children. We who were dead in our trespasses and sins are made alive in Christ Jesus through the washing of holy baptism and through his life-giving holy word. We who were lost in sin death and darkness have been found by the divine detective himself Jesus Christ who is the light of the world we who had no hope on our own for the future now have a sure hope for all eternity this Jesus began his journey in a lowly manger and traveled to an accursed tree so that he might pay the perfect and sufficient price to cover all our sins. But his journey continued when he burst forth from that dark tomb and returned to his glorious home with his Father. One day he will return, so that he can take all who believe in him, no matter where or when they live, to join him glorious home. As this mystery is revealed, we learn whether Jews or Gentiles, all are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Jesus through the gospel. In our Lord's epiphany, Jesus the Savior is revealed for all people Jesus the Savior is revealed to you and for you and for me, for all.
stand where you are seated. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. The Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another, as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks, as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves, as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility at Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. You are to work with the pastor that your life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that God's word is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institutions, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of the congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. So in the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office entrusted to you? And do you promise to faithfully carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word, in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of the Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? We do. Brothers, Sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices, that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation. Strengthen the faith, quicken the love, and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified, and that here and in all places under heaven, the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days, we with all your faithful people may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come. You who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God.
Serve in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated. Let us approach him whose light has dawned upon us and who has drawn us to this light as a people of faith who trust his mercy to answer the prayers of his people with sufficient grace for all our needs. Gracious King, from distant lands and far off places, you have gathered to yourself a people to wear your name and live in the light of your word. Bless your church where she struggles to survive and where she labors to keep up with all the growth, that we may be united in doctrine, live in harmony and peace, and work together that those still in darkness and death may be brought into your light. Through your word, you have made known the mystery of yourself and given redemption to all through baptism and faith. Guide those who preach and teach your word to us and give them a loving heart to shepherd your people faithfully. Bless all church work and those now preparing for your service. Bless our seminaries and colleges and those we support throughout the world. Prosper the publishing of faithful books to teach the faith, including by Lutheran Heritage Foundation, and bless the ways in which we may use the gift of technology for the faithful witness of the gospel. O oh Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, empower us to arise and shine. Gracious you have supplied your people with many and rich resources with which to support the work of your church. Grant to the missionaries and those planting congregations here and throughout the world all things needful, that your saving purpose may be realized and your word may bring many into the fellowship of your church. Except we pray the tithes and offerings we bring that through these treasures your work may not be hindered by any lack of need. As the holy innocent suffered in the wake of Herod's rage, we pray you to comfort the families of the martyrs and strengthen all who suffer for the sake of the gospel. We especially cry to you on behalf of the unborn, that their lives may be preserved with the full protection of the law, and their comfort supported by the full resources of the medical arts. Thank you for the safe delivery of Lily Bell and the gift of a daughter to Travis and Kelsey. Bless her development physically and spiritually. O oh Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, empower us to arise and shine. Gracious King, kings and governments rise and fall, but your word endures forever. Give to all our elected and appointed leaders grace and wisdom sufficient for their task, that they may keep the sacred trust placed in them and serve the common good. Bring all nations into the ways of peace and justice. In your kindness and love, grant us seasonable weather and an abundance of the fruits of the earth. Grant to all people the blessing of food, shelter, medical care, and safety in their homes. Bless especially those who protect us at home, and the service men and women who defend us throughout the world. O oh Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, empower us to arise and shine. Gracious King, by your mercy we are preserved in time of trouble and sustained in illness, even to death. Bless the sick and chronically afflicted, and those troubled in mind and heart, including John, Debbie, Brad, Marcus, Paul, Danny, Mike, Glenn, Lois, Claude, Stephen, thanking you that he's now home, Bonnie, David, Helen, Jimmy, Bill, Shirley, Elda, Kim, Ron, Larry, all who are dealing with recovery from winter storms and violence all affected by the ongoing pandemic and its effects, including the residents and staff of the Lutheran home, and those having to deal with quarantine. 
Give them healing according to your will. Encourage the grieving with hope, especially the family of Gladys, and comfort the dying in their last hour. O Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, give power us to your eyes and shine. Gracious King, gather before the mystery of your presence in this bread. We pray you to prepare us with repentance, to receive in faith your body and blood. By this communion, equip us with every gift and grace, that we may fulfill our baptismal calling as your people, and be kept to the day at last when we join you in the heavenly banquet that has no end. O Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, Give power us to arise and shine. Gracious King, we give you thanks for your faithfulness to all the saints who have gone before us and who now rest from their labors, including Gladys. Continue to gather us along with all your sons and daughters from every corner of the earth until that day when we stand before your throne in glory forever through your only Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord, as we celebrate your appearing as true God and true man, empower us to arise and shine. Gracious King, as you hung upon the cross, you showed us the face of your mercy. Hear the prayers of your people and grant that it all that is needful to us and to those for whom we have prayed, that trusting in your mercy, our hearts may find perfect peace and rest in you. Amen. Since we are your dear children, and you are our Father, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and his peace. Amen. Our distribution hymns this morning are Away in the Manger, which is number 364, and As with Gladness, Men of Old, number 397. We wish you God's blessings as we now leave you.